ever wonder why your concrete creations didn't turn out as expected when using cement all? I'm going to share some game-changing tips that you can use right now that will elevate your concrete candle jar making skills whether you're a pro or a casual do-it-yourselfer. Let's go. Hi, my name is Jay Catalano. Links to any of the products used in this video will be in the description below. I'm gonna do this in no particular order. Which cement all should I use? Home Depot is the main big box store that sells cement all, but like every product on the market, there are a few different mixes. There is a mortar mix, concrete mix, and a cement all mix. Mortar mix is specifically formulated for masonry work featuring a moderate setting time that allows for proper placement and adjustment and it is designed to provide good bond strength in mortar joints. Concrete mix is a general purpose fast setting concrete mix designed for various projects with a quick setting time within an hour and it provides decent strength suitable for a range of applications. Cementol is a versatile, high-performance concrete repair material with rapid setting time around 15 minutes and high compressive strength, making it suitable for structural repairs. The key phrase is compressive strength. That is what we want. We want our crafts to be strong and durable because they are small and will most likely be man or woman handled a lot. In fact, the final cured PSI of a cement all vessel is about 9,000, which is about 3,000 more than its counterparts. A benefit to cement all is that it sets in 15 minutes. That doesn't mean that it's dry and ready to use, it just means that it sets up and will start to maintain its shape as it hardens and strengthens. So cement all in the blue bag, not green or brown, is the one you want to buy. Storing and caring for your cement doll. When storing cement doll, it's essential to keep it in a cool, dry place away from extreme temperatures. That statement is almost becoming cliche. Cool, dry place. Everything needs to be stored in a cool, dry place. Why? Both extreme conditions, whether freezing temperatures or excessively high temperatures, can contribute to the hardening of cement doll inside the bag. In freezing conditions, moisture may set up in the mix and that may cause freezing, leading to expansion and potentially cracking. On the other hand, in high temperatures, there is a risk of accelerated setting, causing the material to harden prematurely. Therefore, it's crucial to store cement all in a cool and dry environment to prevent moisture-related issues that could affect its performance when we're using it. No bueno. So keep the temperature between 60 and 80 degrees and you should be good. In addition, store your cement all in a plastic container to protect it from dust, insects, and water damage if you ever have an unfortunate leak. Here's what I like to do. When I purchase a bag of cement all, I take my $12 container with me to Home Depot. Then after leaving the store with cement all in hand, I cut open the bag and pour the cement all in my storage container in the parking lot. Why? Because I don't want cement all dust to be flying all over my workspace, which will make my area dusty and potentially unsafe as cement all isn't the safest product to use. We'll talk about safety later, but another thing I do is after closing the lid on my storage container, I give cement all a good mix by lifting and turning my container side to side. This helps to mix the contents of the cement all just in case they need a good mixing before I start making concrete creations. And lastly, I wipe down the outside of my container, place it in the back of my car, and take it home. Safety! Cement all is made up of CSA cement and silica sand. Silica sand is a type of sand with high levels of crystalline silica, a naturally occurring mineral. When processed or distributed, such as during industrial activities, silica sand can produce fine dust particles that when inhaled pose serious health risks. 
Prolonged exposure to silica dust can lead to conditions like silicosis, causing breathing difficulties and lung damage. And that is why I wear my respirator. And by the way, I have two. I have my half respirator when I don't want to mess up my hair. And I have my full mask respirator when I'm getting down and deep into my work. Anyway, if you are working with Cementol, you must buy a respirator and you must wear it regularly. I'll link my two favorite down below so you can pick one or both up for yourself. Silicone bowls. These silicone bowls are a must have if you are serious about being a concrete candle maker. They are so useful and easy to work with. All you have to do is add your content to your bowl, mix it up and squeeze the silicone bowl to direct your pour. In addition, cleanup is super easy. I have a video on how to clean up your silicone bowls in case they're stained from pigments. And I'll link that below. Anyway, after I've completed my pour, I let the leftover contents harden, crack it off, and wipe down the bowl. It's that simple. I've used these bowls for all sorts of colors, additives, paints, and dyes, and they still look like they're in great shape. Silicone mats. Cementol is messy and dusty, and no matter how careful you are while you mix and pour, it somehow magically finds its way on your table. There are three ways to deal with it. The first way is to wipe it up immediately. The problem with wiping it up is that any mixture that has color in it will leave a color streak. And once that happens, you'll find that you actually have to clean up a bigger mess than when it was in its original form. The second way to deal with it is let it harden and then chisel it off once it's dry. The problem with this method is when you go to chisel it off, it can ricochet off your spatula because it was so super stuck on your table that now God knows where it is. And the third way, and the best way I have found is using a silicone mat. If your mixture inadvertently finds its way on the silicone mat, it is so easy to clean off. It doesn't streak as much and the mixture never stubbornly sticks onto your surface. Rather, all you have to do is wipe it off. The other thing is it never leaves behind colorful residue if you decide to clean it up immediately. It just wipes up with no hassle. Best investment ever. How to mix cementol. There's the right way to mix cementol and then there's the wrong way to do it. The wrong way is easy. You most likely have been doing it that way since the beginning. So you take your cementol, you dump it into a bowl, then you slap some water on top, stir like a madman, and then pour it into your silicone mold. Then complain when it doesn't look like you thought it should. Oh my God, this is so ugly. The right way is so much easier and you are in much more control. Take your water, gently place it in your silicone bowl, then with grace and finesse, add your cement all on top so your contents can be mixed together, fall in harmonious love, and get hard. Wait, that didn't come out right. Skip that part. Anyway, by adding your mix to your water, you are lessening the chances that dust will fly into the air and you are ensuring a much smoother pour after you mix. One of the benefits of doing it this way is that the bottoms come out smooth like a baby's bottom. Okay, but let's talk ratio. Cementol has a four to one ratio. That means that for every four parts of cementol, you add one part of water. Think of it like money. One dollar is your four parts and one quarter is your one part. Make sense? If you add too little water, then your concrete creation can become brittle and break apart like a potato chip. If you add too much water, your concrete creation might not set properly, which will become extremely obvious when you go to demold your mushy creation. Using pigments, paints, or dyes. If you're going to use pigments, you will get better results adding the pigment to the water and then your contents to your water. I find the color distribution to be better and more vibrant. If you're adding acrylic paint, you can do so once your mix has been mixed, but do know that acrylic paint, if used in excess, can thicken your mix and make it tough to adhere. Finally, if you are a Rit Dye kind of guy or gal, 
you have multiple ways of doing so, and I'll link a video for you to watch on the various ways to use it. But here are two ways that I'll tell you right now. You can add it to your mix or add your vessel to dyed water after it's cured. No matter which color additive you are using, you must follow the best practices to get the best outcomes. All three are completely different and their techniques should not be interchanged. But here is the one thing that is constant and that is the 5% rule. So let's talk about best practices. You should aim to add up to and no more than 5% of your colorant to achieve what you're looking to achieve. What do I mean by 5%? Cementol has a four to one ratio. So if you're going to add 400 grams of cementol and 100 grams of water to your mixing bowl, then you wanna add up to 5% of your preferred colorant to the bowl. What is 5% of 400? Ooh, I know, uh, Justin Bieber. Mm. Is it 20? Yes, 20 grams and no more. As you add more and more color to your mixing beyond the 5%, you significantly start to compromise the integrity of your creation. And if you plan to sell your products, you never know what people are gonna do with them. So be careful, no more than 5%. Marbling, you can marble with acrylic paint, pigment powder, or writ dye. Like the various coloring techniques above, marbling has its own set of best practices. For example, you can add acrylic paint to your cement doll and come out with amazing marble effects. If you don't like to add paints to your mix, then you can add acrylic paint after your vessel is cured to get that marble effect. I have some videos on marbling, I'll link that below as well. Pigment powder can be added to water and then swirled around your mix for great marble effects. Or you can make two different colored mixes and mix the two together to get a nice marble look. If you enjoy using red dye, you can treat it similarly to pigment powder and add it to your mix, swirl it around, and voila, instant marble. However, with all this color and marbling that I'm sure you are interested in doing, you must understand the more color you add to your mix, the weaker it gets. After mixing cementol, let it settle for a minute. Once you finish mixing your cementol, there is an eagerness to fill up the silicone mold like an addict looking for a fix. <music> However, you should always take a second and let your mix breathe. Why? There are bubbles that undoubtedly form in your mixture when you're thoroughly stirring it together. The air from all that mixing causes bubbles to form. Unbeknownst to most crafters, those bubbles are looking to pop and not form a barrier of disturbance in your work. With that said, you should always let your mix settle for a minute so that those initial bubbles can start to rise to the surface and pop themselves out of your hair forever. If you decide to immediately pour, you might find that there are a significant amount of bubbles that couldn't reach the surface because they're stuck in the silicone mold. In addition, most bubbles get stuck on the bottom, which is actually the top of the vessel when you demold it. If those bubbles don't have a means to pop, they will most likely form around the opening of the jar, which in my opinion, doesn't look so how shall I say, bubblicious? Silicone molds. Without trying to sound like Captain Obvious, when cement all hardens, it gets hard. Duh, I know, but hear me out. The last thing you want is a silicone mold that is super taut, which will make demolding very difficult. You might not realize it if you are only demolding five or six different concrete vessels, but trying to demold dozens at a time? it will cripple you. I'm not joking. I have had situations that I have demolded 10 or so vessels at a time. And by the time I got to number eight, I no longer was able to feel my fingers. Demolding could be a workout and it can really be taxing on your hands. And when you get older, not that I have to worry about that anytime soon. <laughs> it can injure you. So what can you do? My best advice is to use softer silicone molds that have not compromised quality. Where can you find those? The best ones I've found to date are the silicone molds for Boo One Nicole. They are soft, 
and so easy to demold, you could probably demold 20 or 30 and still maintain the feeling in your hands to demold more. In addition, Boo on the Co silicone molds usually come with support braces to help maintain the shape of the silicone mold as you continue to use it. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of good silicone mold companies out there, but, and this is a big but, their silicone molds are so thick and taut that once you're done with demolding, you'll never be able to use your cell phone the same way again. How to pour to avoid bubbles. There is a secret to pouring cement all into a silicone mold to avoid getting bubbles. Assuming you have mixed your cement all mixture properly, there are three things you can do to avoid getting those unsightly unwanted bubbles. The first is you must pour your mix into your silicone mold slowly. Now I know what you're probably thinking, that doesn't sound like an amazing tip, Jay. Thanks. But hear me out. I have a better one and it's coming, but let me finish my thought. Pouring slowly helps to maintain the mixture without creating extra bubbles, which undoubtedly will form if you were to pour fast. The faster you pour, the more air will get trapped inside. Now, the second thing you can do is to pour about a quarter of your mixture into your silicone mold and then squeeze the bottom. If you have a lid, put just enough to swirl that mixture around and wet the sides first before you continue. And the third thing you can do is use a heat gun on top of your mixture once you finish pouring. When you use a heat gun on your recently poured cement all, the heat causes the air and moisture within the mixture to expand. This expansion can lead to the release of trapped air bubbles, causing them to pop. Now don't kill the mixture with your heat gun. Lightly pass the heat gun over the top and voila, no more bubbles. Demolding time. Normally we wait three hours to demold our creations, but there is a way to demold them faster if you're using cement doll. Now demolding time will vary depending on where you live and the ambient temperature, but each time you demold your creation, demold them five minutes sooner than the last time. So if you demolded something in three hours, the next time demold it in two hours and 55 minutes, then two hours and 50, then 245, and so on and so on. When you reach the point that your creation crumbles, you know to add five or 10 more minutes for security, and that is your demolding time for that silicone mold. Through my research, I can actually demold my cement all creations in two hours and 20 minutes. That's a 40 minute time savings. Now keep in mind, the thicker your creation, the longer you might have to wait. But on average, a concrete cannel jar can be demolded much faster than three hours. Water bathing. There is so much misinformation on water bathing that we can start a new game show called Dunk or Debunk. The thrilling water bathing game show where contestants try to separate the facts from the wave of lies. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Seriously, asking someone else if you should water bathe your concrete creations is like asking your next door neighbor if you should go to bed earlier. Only you can answer that question. Now, here are the facts. Water bathing is recommended by Cementol. In fact, on the package it says, water cure all rapid set cement all installations by keeping exposed surfaces wet for a minimum of one hour. However, most of our creations are actually covered in silicone, at least the majority of it is, so the majority of us don't need to water bathe our creations, but some do, and that is where the misinformation comes in. People believe that even though they don't need to do something, you don't need to do something. And the best way to know for sure is test them out. Now, some people live in really warm climates and some people live in really cold climates. Each climate will give you different results, so test them out. If you have the option to control your temperature because you have a space in which you can do so, then set it at the normal everyday temp between 65 and 70 degrees and you most likely don't have to worry about water bathing. I'll leave a video linked below that will help you to determine if water bathing is for you. Curing. If you already know that your concrete creation needs to cure, then you are well ahead of the game. If you didn't know that, then let me quickly break it down for you. 
Concrete needs to cure because it undergoes a chemical reaction when water is added to the mix. This reaction helps bind the ingredients together, forming a strong and durable material. Curing is the process of keeping the concrete moist and at the right temperature, allowing this reaction to continue over time. Without proper curing, the concrete won't reach its full strength making it more prone to cracking and less reliable for our creative purposes. So that means that concrete hardens due to hydration and not because it dries. Now the question is, when does the curing process end? Or better said, how long does it take for a concrete candle jar to cure? On average, concrete takes about 28 days to cure, but we don't need to wait that long. If you want to know how long it takes for your concrete creation to lose all or most of its water weight, you're simply going to weigh your vessel daily starting on the day you demold it. Once the vessel starts to maintain its weight, or really close to it, your vessel is cured enough to move on. For example, this vessel started out weighing 315 grams and three days later it weighed 289 grams. On the fourth day, it weighed 289 grams, and then on the fifth day, it gained a gram. Now, I could have weighed it the following day, but being that it teetered between 288 and 289, that tells me that the vessel has lost enough water for me to move on to the sealing process. Now, sealing's a whole nother topic. I'm getting ahead of myself, and I'll talk about that in just a sec. Additives. If you wanna add stuff to your concrete creation after it's cured, then let me tell you how to do so in the best possible way when using Cementol. Before you seal your concrete candle jar, you might wanna add something on top of it first. For example, you might wanna put gold foil on it, or you might wanna use acrylic paint to paint on top of it, or you might simply want to add a label such as a transfer label. Now, the best way to do so is to wait until your vessel is fully cured. Adding stuff on top of a vessel that has water inside will make it more challenging to cure as well as harder to make it adhere. So let's assume your vessel is totally cured and it's ready to go and you want to add some gold foil. You can use a glue specifically for foil and then attach your design or you can actually use a sealer such as Earth Safe Finishes, which acts as a bonding agent as well. And remember, we aren't sealing yet. We're just adding the foil. Now, you might be thinking, why can't I add my gold foil to my silicone mold like I see on the internet? And that's a great question. One issue with using Cementol is that it mysteriously absorbs the foil, so you only notice the foil is missing when you go to demold. If you're interested in painting your vessel like I did here, then make sure your vessel is fully cured so that the paint doesn't block the water from dissipating during the curing process. If you're adding a label, such as a candle label or a transfer label, again, you must wait for it to be cured before adding them on. And if you want to really ensure that the label sticks, you can use your sealant as a bonding agent to lock it in for life. Yes, life. Sealing. If you didn't know you needed to seal your concrete creation before adding wax or anything for that matter, you might be feeling a bit overwhelmed. Why do we need to seal our concrete creations? Concrete, like cementol and even other mixes, are very porous. That means that there are minute spaces or holes through which liquid or air may pass. A good sealer, like EarthSafe Finishes, will protect contents from leaking out as well as penetrating back in. That is why we need to let our vessels cure first. That water that is inside those spaces or holes can get trapped inside if we decide to seal our concrete creations too early. Under certain conditions, that water will look to push its way out. For example, a burning candle. If you seal a vessel too early and then add candle wax, when you go to burn that candle, the harsh conditions will cause the water to try to escape the vessel. If it's trapped inside, it could cause bubbling, peeling, or worse,
cracking. Now there are plenty of good sealers out there and I'll link another video for you to watch so you can see which sealer works best for you. But I prefer EarthSafe finishes because it's the only sealer on the market that is made specifically for concrete candles. And to me, it's pretty easy to use and that's why I use it. But remember, we just talked about additives and using sealant as a bonding agent. After you add your foil or whatever additive you're going to add, you can start to seal it at the same time. Doing it this way is a great way to kill two birds with one concrete candle jar. <laughs> and take a look at these videos that are popping up now. They're gonna help you on your concrete, hydrostone, and candle making journey. Until next time, thanks for watching. Ciao.